Game of Thrones Episode 2, The Lost Lords, moves quickly through its 90 minutes. We get a diverse set of color palettes and environments as we jump between existing locations of Ironrath and King's Landing, and new ones, the conquered slaver city of Yunkai and the Wall. It's eventful alright, but it's all pretty straightforward, and notably devoid of the duplicitousness and backstabbing the HBO show is known for. Asher Forrester is introduced as a cocky, swashbuckling sellsword. Whoa, it's just me, Beska. It took you long enough. His scenes are almost pure banter with his sidekick, Beska, and quick time event action. So he's given no decisions tougher than whether or not to kill people who just tried to kill him. He's likable enough, but hopefully there's more to him than this. Meanwhile, a surprising new playable character arrives at Ironrath to pick up the story, and we get to see the Forrester family cope with their losses in some well-written scenes of grief and anger. From ice, from ice, we Forrester's born, to ice we all return. There was some disappointment when I saw just how little my choice of who to appoint as Ethan's chief advisor actually mattered, though. Garrett Tuttle's introduction to life at the Night's Watch closely retreads Jon Snow's story. Today you're all gonna show me what you're made of. Can you swing a sword? Shoot a bow? Are you strong? Those who do well might just survive. Sure, it's important to establish which of his two fellow recruits will be a friend and which will be an enemy, but it's an obligatory and mostly dull episode for him. Quick time event combat training and simple archery target practice don't make this a better game. Even an appearance by Jon Snow himself does little to pick up the pace. You can't be fighting with the other recruits. You need those men to have your back. Mira Forrester remains the highlight of this series. Where did you get that? I know a boy who keeps the Queen's cellar well stopped. She doesn't match the tension of the first episode's throne room encounter with Cersei Lannister, but her choice of whether to betray Marjorie Tyrell's trust was the toughest one to make in The Lost Lords. It's notable that unlike most decisions in Telltale's games, there's no timer. I sat there and agonized over the pros and cons for a minute or two before making my decision. It's in those moments that Telltale achieves some of Game of Thrones' shades of moral gray. Outside of that, everything's quite cut and dry through the first two episodes of this six-part season. Though there's a murder plot, there's not much of a mystery behind it. The Foresters' struggle for control of the Ironwood intensifies, but their quest for allies to help wrest it from rival Lord Whitehill involves little by way of intrigue. I know what Ramsay said. I'm saying something else. And we're no closer to learning the truth about the North Grove. To live up to its name, this series is going to need more than unexpected deaths. It needs those deaths to be in service of keeping tantalizing secrets. For more on Game of Thrones, stick with IGN.